is no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Side stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories. Yes. Old Briss. Ah, yes. That's the, where we're at. The wonderful Brisbane. Brisbane. It's Brisbane. It's Don't. Brisbane. Don't do it. Every single thing. If you're wondering yeah. what you learn when Brisbane. you're in Australia. No, no. We're going to get beat up. Bruce, we're, Bruce Bane. We're still in town. <laughs> we're still in town. They can come find us. All right. I learned the thing about Australia, which is that if you weren't, oh, if you're wondering what it sounds like, you run all the letters together. Mesvin. Melvin. Yeah. Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> that's different. They Actually, that's just a local thing. Sydney. Yeah. That's man. <laughs> that's but Sydney. That's it. This is the room in which I fart and shit. Yeah, it's my hotel room. It's whole. It's his. It's Henry's hotel room. As you I'm can here. see, it's it luxurious. It's yeah, those of you that are on Patreon, you could see the excellent camera work I've set up. Yeah, no, you're great at it. <laughs> I don't even know we ha- why we have this stuff. Well, normally I use this seat to uh, jerk off at the that's, camera for. So, oh. like, yeah, just so you know, that's that's kind of what my thing is here because I'm doing a side biz. That totally works. Yeah. I totally oh, work. Oh, no, they God, can see oh, your hands. See, mine's blacked out. Uh, welcome to Side Stories. I'm Henry Zabrowski. I'm sitting here with the elegant Ed Larson. Oh, that's so stupid. He's not, though. <laughs> you're smart, and you've been reading, and you've been growing. And not physically. You've honestly lost weight. I don't know. I feel like I'm back up there. Good. Yeah, I'm gain- I prefer I, you. I think I'm gaining it back, to be I honest I prefer you, you bigger. My shirts are getting tight again. That's the only way. I don't get on scales, but when my, my clothes get... Tight to untight. That's when I start worrying about things. That's important. But also, sometimes, honestly, it's the fucking washing machine. Yeah. It's not us, buddy. Oh, yeah, no. It's the true. washing machine. There's There's fucking, these machines fuck with us. I had to use an Australian uh, washing machine. Water went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what the toilets. They go straight they down. They go straight down. Yep. I, have, I can't even check to see the swirling. Well, they have the good... These are the good low water use toilets that just sandblast it, which is great because I've had lots nothing. Of water. I haven't had a solid duke in like three days, so they just blast it right off, and it's nice because we had our wives here, so we had to keep it nice. But now that Natalie's gone, I can do whatever I want in this hotel. Room. I gotta say, the Ace Hotel was unforgiving <laughs> with the uh, bathroom situation and the wives. Well, the thing was is that the Ace Hotel we were in Sydney, it's not a barn. No, it has Bathrooms a th- need a door. It has a three foot. It's a Western style, like you're walking into. It's like an old timey saloon that you have to just, it's a, but it's a tiny room you shit in, yeah. and you just then I blasted every single bit of a tourism oh, yeah. out of my butt in the presence of my wife, essentially, <laughs> which is the only way that we keep it together. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to live shows that we've been doing out here. Fucking awesome! Fucking have been, they've been great. Everybody is a, the a blast. The crowd totally gets it. We were worried they wouldn't get our references. They, they fucking understand They know more everything. than us. They know more than us. They know more about us than, than we know about them. I know nothing about them. Yeah. And they know everything about us. But one thing I will say, I want to reach out to this guy, whoever the fuck, was he came to our show. Oh, my Sydney, God. And he waited to the very end. And it's the only person I have believed when they've said this to me. I, I believe that he believes. Yes. I don't, I don't uh, yeah, believe I don't that know. it's real. Yeah. But this guy... Long gray dreads, like, right down to his ass. Like, but I and I'm c- cool with that. Like, you know, he he made so many white man dreads out in Australia. I a- guess they didn't do the crimes that we did, so they get to keep <laughs> the dreads. I think that's how it goes. <laughs> this guy, he gives us. A little wink. He was not up, feeling irie. No, no, no. <laughs> but he came up to me, and he was like, "Hey, buddy, I can guarantee contact." Same, same thing to me. This is in Sydney. He's like, you give me a couple extra days, you come on out, you and Henry, guaranteed. You know, I was like, well, what do you mean contact? He's like, contact. That means and he I'm, has a boy in his basement that he thinks is an alien. Like, but, he has powder in his basement. There is not a person I believe more than when that man said it, because it was the jittery way he said it. He obviously has got like, he's got a little secret. Yeah, and he's his buddy little, was just like nodding yes yeah, behind yeah. him. He like, said nothing, but he was just like, he was like hard style posing on like... You be- you best believe. You best believe you get contact. But you know what I will say? He never said with what? Yeah, he did he just said contact. He just said contact of the phenomenon and that we could go experience it, but we just we didn't. No, of course not. 
We would you have if we had extra time in Sydney? I mean, I would have thought about it. There is like it's the, the kind of thing you got to hire private security for out here. That we did a little bit la- like so last week we covered the Australian poltergeists and mm-hmm. ghosts, and I got a lot of feedback that say it is true they don't really like freak out about the capital p phenomenon the way that we do yeah you know they really are like it's more a part of their original culture they have a thing called like dream song they like speak they they have old like versions of life i got a really really interesting email from a a scala because we have a couple things we're gonna do some updates first of course yeah also, I feel like they're not as scared of ghosts out here because all they have more deadly animals than any other place. Yes, this is a this, this, um, yeah. Why would you be scared of a ghost when, when you, you have a giant bird that can slit you open from <laughs> fucking pubic bone to tit? Um, but this, I got a really interesting email. Um, the, the dreaming or dream time, as it was known, plays a hugely important role in Aboriginal storytelling and culture, and some stories that come to mind that refer to the magical properties of rocks. Okay. This is where all the rocks and stone stuff comes from, apparently. The story of Titalik, a giant frog from the dreaming that drank all the water holes to spite the other animals. He used rocks to hold the water down, and when the other animals tickled him to get him to laugh and release the water, <laughs> he spat both the waterways and rocks across the land. And this was used by some Aboriginal groups to explain why some of the weird, weird-shaped weird rocks and rivers ended up in bizarre places, such as the Devil's Marbles. That's scary. I just I'll thought, show you. You want to see some fucking devil's marbles? I got two in my back. It's called being fucking <laughs> traveling for 13 hours and then two. Oh. Um, they were also like stones were also historically used to define nations in pre-colonization Australia. And it was a grave crime to pass over these Waymark stones without permission. Waymark stones were also for the birthing trees, men's sites, and women's sites. These marker stones could be imbued with spiritual energy to help guard the land from intruders and protect the people of the land. That's right. But so, so it is. ghost is nature. Yeah. They got ghosts. Yeah. It's in the trees. Yeah. That's Whoa, actually- that's the devil's marbles. The big balls. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it just looks like it does look like it's two very weirdly perched rocks that look like a sack of balls. <laughs> and hey, when in Australia, stick your face in them. You never, mo- you never hear about motorboat and balls. No, 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 no. I try it all the time though. When I sling them over my shoulder. Yeah, oh, you got to. How else are you supposed to fucking get around? <laughs> I drew nipples on them so Julie could experience some lesbianism. <laughs> Only in Henry's hotel room can you experience such delightful banter. <laughs> yeah. She gets in there. She's like, Bro-ski. she's next door. She's going to leave. <laughs> um, we want to do also one little other update while we're here. Yeah. It's a shout out to Jack Carlson. He shot to fame. After his succulent Chinese meal arrest, for those of you who don't know, just look up succulent Chinese meal man Mm -hmm. on the internet. It did happen right here in Brisbane. It was on film. And if you look at the film, it looks like it shot from in 1975, but it was 1991. That's Australia. his innocence to the grave. Oh, yes, he did. Well, he said that it was a case of mistaken identity. They were looking for someone else. They pulled him out. Because it was credit like, card th- fraud. And he's like, I only use cash. Yes. Ah, then this is an example of democracy manifest. Oh, look, you get your hand off my penis. Ah. Oh, get your hand off my penis. I, he was a, Do you think a he hero. talked like that when no one was around? Apparently, like, yes. Like if it was this cat. He'd be like, get off that chair. Yeah, quit licking your butthole. It is under. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he learned to act in prison. Oh, he had okay. a life of petty crime. He was an art forger. He was a very interesting person. He is the center in a perfect example of what we talked about last week of Australian lyricanism. Mm-hmm. Right? The idea of being well, he naughty. Never got for, out of it. Not once. No, no he they stayed Alerican. He stayed Alerican. And they said on his, he died the day after his one of his birthdays. He had many fake birthdays. There's like, because right now there's a, a new book that just came out called that's Carnage. Good to get a gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a book about him that's coming out. And there's also a documentary that's supposed to be coming out vaguely soon that all said that he gave everybody a bunch of different birthdays. He was a, he's just a straight up fun ass scoundrel. He was selling art of his arrest that he would draw. 
<laughs> and he was and he was like three thousand dollars a piece <laughs> and shit. Love that motherfucker. Yeah, he's, no, I actually at, at first I was like, ah, oh, this weird criminal, he's a thief. And then you just learn more about him. You're like, you know, go for him. There was there was a spirit about him. Um, he was put in some like apparently he spent his childhood in a bunch of like like he on he said that he got molested to the highest degree. And then he was <laughs> to uh, the highest degree. No, I'm just adding just, the I'm adding just, the qualifiers. Did he, did, he get, did, he, did he get arrested by an oven? Uh, <laughs> yes. You all know I see what you're doing, Mr. Sanderson, my English teacher. Oh, you will touch my limp penis. But no, he uh he went through he, a lot of shit. He um Apparently, he had to connect to a guy in Australia by the name of Mr. Rentakill. Oh. This famous Australian hitman that he was friends with in jail. And he was put in this place, which I do want to visit, but it's kind of far out, which is supposedly this extremely haunted jail in Australia called, I believe it's called the Boggy Road Inn. Is that in Perth? No, no, no. It's like right here. He's he's old Brizzy, man. This oh, man okay. is from Brisbane. This man is Brisbane Incarnate. Because he he mentioned Perth in an interview I watched. I think, I think he spent some time over there as well. I do find it interesting that most people that I've talked to in Australia never even gone to, to Perth. It's far. And apparently it's where all their diamond billionaires live. It's like Maine, kind of. Like, you know, we all want to go, but no one really does. But no, well, Maine's got, Maine doesn't got the money that. Perth, Perth has really you don't no. think so no Maine's just got Stephen King lobster That's, uh, those are two very expensive things lobsters cheap there oh yeah man wow stand still now here that's um bay bucks is what they call lobster bay bugs yeah I saw that and there's a mm, we gotta go I'm trying to find this place this amazing job. well I, I'm gonna get more into haunted Brisbane Later this week. Yeah. I'm not going to bust my load, so to speak, now. Oh, is that so to speak? Is that, is that as look? <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a little bit of my own remote recording. Yes, we're going to come back with a remote episode. I'm doing one of these on the road. So, when you, so, you, so basically, you're going to listen to Henry jerk off oh, and bust his load no. and make his own ghost. Oh, where's my wife? Where's my wife? All right. One episode done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, that'll be one more for you, better help. <laughs> From your grave. Um, we saw the dugong at the. We saw their manatee. We saw their manatee. Yeah, which is you know I. I Again, liked, he was tiny. I wanted more true crime like tourism here. There's not. There is almost none. The only story besides Jack Carlson, it's who's no like town. we're also going to give a big. So we're giving you I know. Can't he died out. when we were here. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, we weird things happen for some reason around our show. Yeah. We like we talk about synchronicities happening. All the time. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but we, the man, the, the love that people have for that dude. But the other true crime story, there's like five true crime stories in Brisbane, essentially, that they are famous all of, for. For all of time. Yes. And I was just like, holy shit. They can like name them, which is amazing. Um, the one story that I found interesting was a story of a woman by the name of Tracy Wigginton, who was known as the lesbian vampire. Sign me up. She stabbed a, a guy so bad in the throat that his head, he's basically decap decapitated, and then she drank all the blood. And then she was in jail for a period of time. She said, oh, it's, it takes a lot to be famous these days. <laughs> that was like one of her lines. And then she um, apparently has been released and is now on TikTok. That's great. Yeah. Good for her. I'm glad she's out. You know, you got to learn from your mistakes. Monetize it. I, and I have to say, I was under the impression that all female vampires were lesbians interesting do you think like honestly like don't they all just like fuck each other they're no, all lesbians I don't, actually that's a side story is lpotl at gmail.com i have a couple of friends obviously my friend el does some work like writing in the fan fiction world of vampires we're gonna ask mm -hmm. father no, we just we met could. we can just ask him about whether or not like why do vampires do they when in the spiritual sense do they need physical sex of course they do. That's the whole vampire thing. They use sex as the disguise to get prey. Prey, the seduction, is their tactic to get the blood. I You're don't saying know if they don't like it. I'm saying they like the blood. I don't know if they like the breasts. You don't think they fuck each other? I they, don't know. They definitely fuck each I other. I feel like they, according or, to you know what we do in the shadows, anyway. Well, yeah, but that's that. I don't take that as vampire canon because it's satire. See, I feel like they know more than anyone. No, I don't think they did the research. You'd be you'd be surprised. 
Yeah. You'd be surprised with these people. All right. They say all they say willy nilly things without vampires without talking to one. We can talk to one. That's a good point. But he's not a real vampire. Not anymore. He's the same. Yeah, of course he's a real vampire. Well, he doesn't actually like, you know. He drinks blood and he sucks. He says every once in a while he drinks blood he and every once in a while he gets energy. He, he goes out. of blood. He doesn't he, drink it. That's, hey, like, that's more than you're doing. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to come back to Tracy Wigginton, I don't know if she says her in other vampires. Please tell us. In 2021, interest in Wigginton was revived. Yeah, she's on Facebook and a lot of people are coming after her because it was a pretty famous murder here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because they, I was reading the paper out here and it was like, it, there's a rash of teenage murder. We've had three this year I in all know. of Australia. And you're like, that sounds great. I wish. Yeah, I mean, I wish yeah, we it only sounds like our killers murders. are just like taking a break. <laughs> like, that's when our killers are tired. That's like the week after Christmas before, Janu- before January 1st. It is sad when people get killed. Yes, of course. They, their numbers are phenomenal compared to ours. My question is. How do they even do a weekly true crime podcast here? I know, it's weird. You know, without good new material, it's almost like... They fantasize about us. They just make stuff up, or do they talk about us? They talk about us. Yeah. They talk about us. All right, speaking of talking about us, we need to get to the bottom of... You have updates. Oh, yeah. Our story... South Knoxville. We're I know we're not in America right now, but we've been getting. The- I stayed in touch with everything that's going on. I'm on the Facebook page, the South Knoxville Soup Gate page. They are still reaching out to us. Yeah, there has been no movement in the case. There's at all. some. There's some. No, there's some updates. Are cops are actually getting involved now, or they cops decided are, they cops- decided to, oh, to? They decided that it's good enough for them to join in on the hunt for who's doing this. Drew Smith, my man. Well, just say Drew. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's he loves the attention. <laughs> And he's, uh, he's he's the leader of the Facebook page. Go to the South Knoxville Soupgate Facebook page. Join in. See if you can help. Give your suggestions on what it may be. Drew Smith is clearly the leader. He took up a collection. They started selling shirts so they can like finance ways to like catch these guys. And they got some stuff that I'm not allowed to even talk about yet. Whoa! To catch the people doing these things. Can you hint? Is it about big traps? Are they digging holes and then putting grass on top of the holes? Dude, these there is a vigilante force oh yes about they're not like it's funny and everyone's laughing about it but they're gonna stop this well because so we're for those bag who, 51 we're gonna catch you up here just so you know various bags of substances have been found laying down in the streets of south knoxville it's a white bag with a black bag around it and it's always filled with what we thought was puke but it's not puke well it's not because we watched now this might be obstructing a criminal case, but we did, uh, our boots on the ground did open up one of these bags. And if you look inside of the bag, the weirdest quality of the material is that it's white. Like, we're but, now, but I'm now looking the at the sun, them. it turns, it's also been brown as well. <laughs> you mean it's also been brown? If it leaves out in the street for long enough, it like yeah, turns it brown turns and shit. brown. Now, the main. Or the honestly, the feedback that we've gotten the most is that it sounds like we're so like it's a area of town that is not as moneyed. There's a little Pickens bit, Gap, yeah, Pickens Gap. They're, they're saying that maybe potentially it's because a, a some form of food truck doesn't want to pay for a dumpster fee, and so they're possibly dropping these bags of what would be like grease trap material and food waste, but that doesn't look like food waste that well, doesn't like you tell me does well, that look like what you scrape out of a grease trap uh, you know i never scraped the grease trap you know you you dump into the grease trap and it has like a gate on top of it and then you pay someone to come and pick it up later so that and guy it's a pros- so drew reached out to the people who pick up the grease multiple companies and he sent them pictures of it and they're like oh yeah that's a grease. That's all grease. That is grease. That is grease. Okay, yeah. so this is it. Is has to be a restaurant based crime, and the reason why mm-hmm. this continues to fascinate us is because now, like, not only is it just like, yeah, it's just normal gross vandalism, but people are starting to hit the bags with their cars and get into accidents. We're oh, yeah. this grease- close for there to be a murder attached to this. Well, the grease stays. Hopefully. It doesn't even wash away in the rain. Some of it has stayed there for a week. A couple spots have stayed for over a month. Making it slick as hell. Yeah. And unless you're fucking skiing, dude, and unless you're doing anything, I don't want to know about this, this the Pickens Gap slalom team. Yeah, somebody dumped a bag off of uh, next to the cemetery on Pickens Gap. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, and so that's that, vandalism. Was, that's more vandalism. They're trying to give the ghost a belly ache. Yeah, no, and and Drew is convinced. He's convinced, and I, I I don't know if I believe him or not, but he's convinced that the soup dumper is a part of the Facebook group and getting tips on where to drop the soup. If I was the soup dumper, and we're not, we're in Australia. There might be multiple dumpers, too. I, I am starting to think we're turning into a, this might be a I am Spartacus moment. Yeah. And that there are several people now dumping, now knowing, much like when we said in 9-11, during 9-11, a bunch of guys whacked out, a bunch of, like, you know, they settled up, like, mafia-like mm -hmm. like problems and gang issues and oh, stuff, because yeah, like, yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah. distracted by 9-11. Jackson I, Heights. Yeah, they, I, and we're like, you know, when people, guys were whacking guys during Son of Sam, yeah. right, to say, like, oh, look, that must have been a Son of Sam. Oh, he had long, dark hair, or whatever, and so... That's the thing. Now all of these soup-based criminals are coming out of the fucking woodwork. Devil, we reached out to our real-life superhero. He says that he really doesn't want to get on a plane unless there is death. Okay. But he says that he's got a guy he's also going to send in a look. That'd be good. That'd yeah, be good. because like, you know, and I think Parrot Man's coming. And when Parrot Man comes, yeah, he might. you might be tricked by his tropical feathers, but he will kick the living fucking shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's <laughs> items found in the soup. Not limited to, but these are uh, confirmed items found in the soup. Because Drew, he opens the bags when he can, and he finds out what's inside of them. Um, so, uh, so they found onions, carrots, celery, <laughs> potatoes, chicken. Chicken, pepperoni, or salami didn't do a taste test. <laughs> a Philly cheese steak. Gonna have to take that into the lab. Corn, mushrooms, noodles, possibly egg noodles. He says, um, egg and noodles. baked cheese, like a layer of like lasagna baked cheese. Uh, he's found in there. Are they just making food? I'm putting it directly into the bag. There is like there is definitely a rest someone who doesn't want to pay for grease disposal and like someone's like, Yeah, I can take care of it, and no one's asking questions because someone's just take care of it. But it's all over the news. I of course someone someone has to it's know. It's not all over the news. It's all over our news. It's not <laughs> <laughs> No one's handling this. Eventually someone some if someone dies, yeah, we're gonna get a Pulitzer. He's saying it's a possible. It's like a home. It looks like home style cooking, and I it gave me a theory. Oh All yeah, because right? like because you know during COVID, one thing that proliferated throughout society was like the idea of a restaurant that was in name only on like Postmates or on a delivery service, and people were making food inside of their home and sending it out. Yeah. So here's what I think's happening. All right, one big fat family. You know, they got a lot of fam. They got big families down there. And they're all fat. Not all of them, but it happens. They're just in. Yeah, it's not that not yeah, everyone's not fat. Every fat family is in Knoxville. But if it's a family in South Knoxville, it could be fat. Yeah, I, I, I think that everyone would agree that there are large families of two sizes. It's there. just because, again, it's food wastelands. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on. It's so systemic. I think, I think there's someone feeding a giant family. And one of the members of the family's job is to dump the grease. Now, I, I <laughs> think that the, like this is a, I think that yeah, like a I think, big crime. Because if you keep the grease at home, the critters will get into it. You know, like the raccoons and the possums. You don't want those critters in your grease. And so I think that who the gives dumping, a shit about the critters? They'll let them have the grease. Well, they're dumping it in the street. Are you ready for this? So they, so the, the critters are getting to the, the 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 fucking stuff in the street. Exactly, and they're getting hit by the cars, and they're scooping up the critters, and they're cooking them back up, and it's a vicious circle that never ends. Eddie, thanks to my <laughs> president, <laughs> RFK Jr., I know for a fact that that could be true. Yeah, yeah, because the only like a, proper it's a, it's person a trap, it's a grease trap. On the road Eddie, to catch critters, you hit it with the car. That's not a bad idea. You take a raccoon, you go home, you Dude, skin it. That is not, maybe not that incorrect yeah. because it was weird. Ever since that batshit idiot started talking about eating roadkill on the regular, everybody was saying the same thing. Like they're all like, I, I, the response to it being like, it ain't that weird. And so there was yeah. enough. There was enough people that said that RFK Jr.'s story was not that weird yeah. to prove to me. That people do eat roadkill on the regular. Oh, yeah. And Knoxville is a nice city. It was thought about. No, Knoxville's beautiful. Knoxville's beautiful. Can we but, go? But but there are sections where they might eat critters. Well, and I don't think that that is even. I think some people just get a taste for it. Yeah. And I also think that it's 
it is it's just meat that's hanging out. Mm -hmm. People do just eat. Ro I know I've eaten roadkill. I have eaten roadkill. Yeah. So I feel like it's not even that nuts. But the idea of storing roadkill. My thing about if you're going to eat roadkill, that's a today meal. Yes. Like I feel like if you're collecting roadkill, there's a lot of there's other things happening. Yeah. You need to think about it. Oh yeah. I, mean, I don't well, think you need to collect it. Well, someone has to because, it, like, unless you've gotten a taste shop in America. For it. I mean, no, that's not. Those are brave. Those are the brave people. Those are real. Those are real Americans. Oh, picking I up didn't road say they're bad people. I just I'm said just, it's a bad job. I'm just saying, if someone's doing this as a fucking just a way to get roadkill easy. Yeah, I think this. I think there could be that going on. So what I don't understand is why don't they just then hit him with their car themselves? Well, they might be. They might set off the trap and wait for them to get all up in the grease, and then they come and they run right through them. But you know what, though, Eddie? The only thing is, because I'm a police officer, yeah, it is not I, the one issue. I think would be there's no blood at the scene. That is a good point. And if there, if there was smears of blood with the grease, would you even be able to tell? If it was all mixed up, you could tell. There's, a, I'm looking at this grease. It's, I'm looking that at the grease, grease right now. Changes colors when it hits the fucking. But it don't have red streaks. No. If it had red streaks, well, that was like an a unopened, That was an unopened bag that he caught. Because they've been taking pictures. The Facebook page is great. If someone spots a bag, they take a picture and they put it right up on the Facebook group. And they're like, it's at this location. And then Drew goes and scoops it up and he goes through it. Is he not bringing it to the cops? I'm worried what Drew's going to do when they figure out what happened. I think he might continue doing Drew it. Drew is working with the police. He is. Good. No, no, no. He no, is smart. No, he is. Good. Yeah, he's no, got to no. do this on the up and up because they could throw this whole case out. No, he's not a full vigilante. No, he needs he's to not, be. Yeah, unfortunately, no. even though we love devil and we love people out there that are fighting for the freedoms of the United States of America in a positive way, I think that we got to make sure that we're doing this right because we can't let this guy off the hook on the technicality. Yeah. Also, another weird stipulation is because they went a week with no grease. And so no check flights, no, drops. they should check flights in and out of Knoxville and see who's going international. Somebody noticed that if grease was dropped on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, they would drop the grease all week. But if no one dropped on a Sunday, Monday or Tuesday, the rest of the week would have no grease. That doesn't really make sense. But <laughs> it's a coincidence. I mean, we're just putting together data. These are, Again, this is, this is how they. This, that's it. That's the it's information I'm throwing out. I'm rewatching True Detective. Yeah, they do that, right? You yeah. just got to put it all out in a big. You got to take all the info you have, oh. and you got to spread it all out. You I gotta look at each I guarantee one. my boy is a whole pin board set up in oh, his house. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because you never know when that little clue is going to jump up and bite you. Also, the bags are huge. Yeah, they're big. 10 to 15 pounds each, she well, says. That's why we're- Multiple we, gallons of grease. It is It is almost for certain some form of either. It's got to be a food truck. I would say it has to be a food truck. And I think it's someone who works for somebody and it is their job to get rid of the grease. And then the person who employs them doesn't ask questions. It's just going to be get to a point where it's going to hurt somebody and we're all going to find out what's going on. Aren't oh we? yeah, I really guess hope what? this stops being. This doesn't stop being funny. The long arm of justice is coming for you, Soup Man, Doctor oh. Soup, Evil Doctor Soup. Yeah, I know it's, you're listening. You, I know you're listening. Shit. I know for a fact. And if you're a fan, honestly, thank you. Yeah. But buy merch, please. <laughs> also, go on buy Patreon. some of the soup merch if you would. But otherwise, <laughs> until the day you're arrested, you stay a fan. Thank you very much. Five stars on iTunes. But until that day, that day is going to come for you, buddy. Just know that. No drug dealer gets out without being, if you get out. It's if, not if, it's when, it's, brother. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah, man. Right. And also, the, the person who was questioned by the police, I believe, is no longer a suspect. Who was it? We don't know. I can't give out that information. He was a, an Italian chef in from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Boyardi. I would look for like if there's like a local carnival. Oh yeah, local like a carnival. Of pepper oh yeah, if there's an if evil we carnival. The Philly cheesesteaks in there, and like, and if, if we're looking, at, if we're talking about pepperonis, I'm thinking this could be an Italian, uh, faux Italian spot. Actually, sounds like also kind of like a with that level of variety of food. To be frank, it sort of sounds like uh, like what's the spot? It's like a cheesecake factory where you've got too big of a menu. There's yeah. too many options. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so you buy the. It's what always Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay always crawls up these guys' asses for having too big of menus. Yeah. Because then you can't dial in the food that you got going on. You got to really think about it. I love in a place like we serve chicken fingers. That's I love that. Yeah. Just chicken. Yeah. Because then I know that chicken's concentrated on. There is chicken in the bags too. I'm hungry. 
I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stop doing this. All right. We have eaten. All right. So Drew, that soup gate 2024. Get his ass, man. Yeah. We're, I support you, man. I'm here for you. I love Drew because he's not a fan. He's just really into the soup. I love that. No. Yeah. Don't yeah, listen. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't listen. But you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Um, one thing. I, oh, one. Another little tiny update is. The response we got back on our movie review episode means we're definitely going to do it again. People loved it. I people were. I love the divisiveness. They, they got so I, mad. I love the discussion. Um, I did get from a PhD in movie theory a breakdown of why Jaws specifically is a horror film. Okay. Because the idea of Jaws in the mystery of it. Yes, it is a monster movie, mm -hmm. but in the mystery of jaws the shark that that's kind of where they put it it's like there's a that's where the mysterious angle but i did get but then it's like the and faceless someone else. Yeah. and emotionless uh michael myers the shadow it's the same yeah and you don't know what it is because you don't see jaws till three the quarters through the movie yeah you really are just sort of like wondering what this thing is yeah. it really does seem like it's, it does have supernatural abilities even though it is just a giant shark like that's a part of and i, I thought that was a very interesting the fact breakdown. that it kind of follows them around and shit yes yeah. it stalks them you know like that you would require a brain for that but I did also get someone did send me a long breakdown that was like, so if horror movie, if these aren't horror movies, what are they? And it made a list of a bunch of different movies. Honestly, I had a reason for each one of them for why they were or were not a horror movie. Oh, yeah. One was like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's like, well, then that would be a thriller according to your rules. No, because Grandpa's mysteriously alive. Grandpa has yeah. a there's a mysterious element that's going on inside the house. Then they also brought up, I think was interesting, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Where would you find this movie? Yes, you would put it in the horror section. But that's a serial killer movie. That is a thriller. And the thing is, it's about genre versus where do you put it in a blockbuster? I Joel, our research sent a great breakdown about how when he worked at Blockbuster and when I worked at Hollywood Video, Jaws was an action adventure, not in horror. And there are people that view it sideways. So it's just about kind of also where rated you put PG. the thing. Also rated PG. But you would put Henry Portrait of Serial Killer in the horror section uh, because there is, unless you're in some super nerdy she-she video store, they're not going to have a breakdown of subdivisions of well, genre. Well, thriller's always... A, you know what? Here's the difference between Henry... Let's do Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer versus Copycat. Sure. Copycat is a thriller. Henry drama. is a, is a, is a you know, thriller drama. Yes. And then uh, Henry is more horror. I think a lot of it has to do with how much do they actually concentrate on the killer rather than the cop. Oh, sure. And plot. And then, what yeah, is the plot of the film? And how gory is it? Oh, sure. And, and I, if I, it's like super gory, it go, starts leaning towards towards horror a little bit. But I put serial killer movie in horror bracket if I had to, but I still think it's its own thing. A serial killer movie, but that's thriller. That's thriller. Yeah, yeah, not yet. In serial my mind. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah, again, yeah. we're going to start this, we're going to set this whole argument all over again, but, and I love it. Yeah, but yeah, Henry is, Henry of his portrait of a serial killer, horror, copycat thriller. Yep. Kiss the Girls, thriller. Silence of the Lambs, horror, Hannibal, thriller. Hannibal, Are you ready for that? I agree with that, but I also think that Silence of the Lambs is also, that breaks through to extreme drama. Yes. You know, like, and that also has weird elements because it does have the the uh, the Buffalo Bill section at first is very mysterious. We don't really know what the hell is going on. It does mm. feel, Red Dragon is closer to a horror movie. Yes. Because of the way they portray Red Dragon. Manhunter. Yeah, Manhunter's, God, Manhunter's great. Manhunter's so fucking good. God, it's been so long. All right. I think that we did it. I think that was our response to the response. <laughs> and we're going to get more. We're going to be talking more. I think we're going to do more of those episodes because they were great. Yeah, no, we should do like one a quarter or something. We, I really like it. Um, all right. We got to get to some new stories. Okay. My, so we got a couple of doozies this week that I did not like. Oh, man. It's hard to be out of America for some of these. This oh, we have one, one more update, I thought. Oh, sure. The reborn baby dolls. Oh, God. No. Ugh, this is a story. Someone said, and we covered, we talked a lot about reborn babies. In the, yeah, the, in horror, the creepypasta the creepy episode. Pasta episode. I, someone sent in, um, which is really gross, this sack, this like sack, it's a set of reborn babies. They're done in the style of the Avatar Blue people. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they gave them full-on genitals. Well, just just vaginas. No, there's a boy. Do one. they have a boy? I didn't see the boy. Oh, there's a boy one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it is, um, I don't know what the purpose is for. I feel like we could have made it smooth because we don't see their genitals in the film. Also, I'm pretty certain their genitals are in their tails. I was fell asleep for most of Avatar 2, so I don't know if there was a fuck scene. I wish there was. Someone should have woke me up. Yeah, I think their little vaginas wouldn't have been able to hold the water out. I don't know if they have little vaginas, and this, I hate looking at this, because yeah. it's soft It's and right wiggly. on Amazon. Yeah, well, it is just available on Amazon. So it's if you weird, wanna... because the first picture, they show the they show the little vagina. Yeah, I hate but it. But on the bottom, they, they blur the vagina out. As they should. I still think, why have it? If you're going to blur it out, don't sell it. Yeah. Because obviously it's bad. And it's not good. I don't know what this is for. It's not, it's not fuckable. A, also, I love that it's not available in Australia. Yeah, of course. It's not fuckable. It's not a flashlight because I don't know if that would be on Amazon. Yeah. They're saying, yeah, they say you can't you can't do anything to it. <laughs> you could put your balls no, on top. Yeah, no, you, there's no, yeah, you can't penetrate it. Thank God. Sort of- which is very, you know, it's a good, it's a good stipulation to have on your avatar baby doddles. <laughs> you could baby just come on its baby, fucking baby face dolls or whatever. Oh, this one looks oh. horrible. There's only one left. Oh, that is a big-headed preemie one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of people reached out that said that apparently the reborn it's baby called thing. Little little old man doll. Yeah, uh, man, the reborn baby thing is a lot. Yeah, because there are people that just have it because they never got to be a parent, and it's like it's something to do, and they put proper. Also, people they who lost it. children and they need something that kind of helped them out, and I, I get it. Oh, you know, like yeah. it's like I emotional. Think just, a bottle of wine. Well, that that is a problem sometimes. Oh, this one has an umbilical cord. Ugh. We're supposed to cut those off, like a lasso. I'm yeah. Throwing it around like a bolo, like I'm gonna fucking attack a. Yeah, and it's got Wonder a little, Woman with it. I think they all got little penises. Now that I'm looking at it, yeah. Let's, let's if it's gonna be a good little, if it's gonna be a baby doll, you know, that you're that's supposed to replace a child, it should have genitals. Now I'm going back. No, I'm going. If it's no. supposed to, if it's no, no, no well, because it's accurate. So what am I supposed to do? So what am I fucking supposed to do? You mean to tell me the part I want to see most is go the face? Be, oh, I better go look. Make sure it's got a set of set of peeps on it. Oh, better go look at its little vajunt when instead of being like, no, I want it's its face. Yeah. The face is the important part. The legs and the arms are important. And the weight of it. Yeah. I don't think it needs to have any form of genitalia. Do you remember the dolls when we were kids like that would pee their pants and then the, you would have to change their diapers? Yeah, they were gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we yeah, stopped yeah. making those. I think we stopped making them. But yes, they existed. And it's it helps motherhood. But, I, but also, t- unfortunately, what it does is help... Dish, it, sticks in those quote-unquote traditional gender roles that then kids are sort of forced to do because they're for like they feel like they have to that's why we, well, get we to- i had to carry around the sack of flour for a while you know and, and did you do that did you go to school in the in <laughs> fucking <laughs> poland <laughs> so what to pretend to be oh yeah we, they would give us a sack of flour and we'd have to carry it around with us everywhere we went for a week we had to bring an egg an egg? Okay, yeah. Yes. And we had to bring it back. And an egg's much harder than a sack of flour. Yeah, I just put it in my fucking backpack. Yeah. I remember the the more advanced class had full baby dolls. Oh. And I remember that like my friend was like brought it to a, a party we all had for some reason. <laughs> and then we stuck it in the microwave. Yep. <laughs> She's, you know, it was like obviously she was mad that we ruined the microwave and the doll, but it was too funny not yeah, to do it. Yeah, what do you want from me, man? You yeah, brought this to the party. Yeah, man. we're getting hammered here tonight. Yeah, yeah. Don't bring I your fucking this. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bring your fake baby to this party it's gross <laughs> <laughs> oh god you to boil it oh god all right here we go all right back, back to, to the, the news <laughs> that's the news that's the updates Live from your grave. now this story i wanted to talk about because this is truly one of the most harrowing stories i've heard outside of the, this week was the story of a family that ambushed police officers during a uh this is it's really wild all right this is out of eustace florida incredible place a little north of orlando uh a a young woman by the name didn't even finish naming it a woman by the name of julia sulpizio uh and her right-wing conspiracy family right now they have a whole family uh you know they definitely were riding for biden um, but they were, uh, this family, they ambushed law enforcement officers, killing one of them, injuring two of them. But what they did was this lady was accusing their neighbors of being a pack of pedophiles, uh, which as we know, 
is normally called a pecker. Yeah. <laughs> and they, uh, she said they were trying to get him to come over to the house, right? And trying to get him to come over to their house saying, you're sinners and we want to handle you. And these, this family was like, you know, again, they were already perturbed about being called a pecker of pedophiles. And they called the police saying that there's something going on with our neighbors. The police arrived to find a very troubled woman by the name of, of Julia. She came forward and she said that her, essentially her husband was a prophet. They were going to cleanse the world of evil souls. She could see souls that are bad. And she was going to bring those souls to her husband to murder. Uh, and the cops were like, uh no. And so they went to go check. They arrested Julia. They went to go check on the house. The family was barricaded inside. Now, the guy, the husband's name was Michael Sulpizio. He was there with his two daughters uh, that were both 22 and 23, Savannah Sulpizio and Cheyenne Sulpizio, young girls. They went to go, like, essentially do welfare check inside the house. Mm -hmm. uh, no response. They were outside the house for an hour saying, like, come out. Finally, they, des they decided we're going to go pop in there. They knew that there was a collection of guns in the house. Deputy opened the back door to a man in full body armor with a rifle sitting on a couch who lit him up. Two other guys came in behind them, fighting. They basically, as they came in, they heard one of the little girls scream, my, my father, the king, will kill you all. Because um, uh, because Julia Sapolsky also she uh, introduced herself as Helen under God's will. So at least they, you know, it seems like they were good to their children. <laughs> you mean just being present? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, they were she extremely had faith present. In her father. She yeah, yeah, like, oh yeah. I've never most who, most children don't have that much faith in their parents. They would never kill for their father, and <laughs> but they did. Yeah, my king will kill all of you, according to one of them. So these officers, they got lit up. They tried to go get people back in. They they tried to go rescue the guys that were trapped inside. The guy's body cam was still rolling while he was inside of the house, which witnessed the father and the two girls pop their own heads in the house. So Damn. they were just like, pop, pop, pop. And they all went in. They had... Uh, all right, I take it back. Yeah. They had a lot of conspiracy theory material, a lot of which no one's really talking about of what nature. I can't imagine. Um, and uh, you know, they had guns, ghillie suits, explosives, and they were trying to kill their neighbors. Where do these people get their money? I, I, ghillie suits are not cheap. They are not. Well, let me look this up, actually. How much is a ghillie suit? I actually don't know if I can even look that up here. You, they, they're, they're $45. All, oh, so it was a shitty ghillie suit, probably. <laughs> yep, it's on Timu. Oh, okay. Yeah, fucking Timu, yeah, man. Yeah, man, you can get that for 45 bucks. Done. <laughs> they get it done. Um, these guys, yeah, they were total psychopaths. So the family, the rest of them are dead. Julius Sulpizio is now being held without bail. Oh, she's still alive. Oh, yeah. Why didn't she kill herself? Because she was the messenger, Betty. Oh. She came Never out. Never shoot the messenger. Be <laughs> <laughs> Even if they you're doing have. it. Yeah. They probably could have. <laughs> um, but they went in there and they said, apparently, because she greeted the officers. And her, I think, essentially, from the body cam footage that I have watched over and over again, her aggressive nature, saying that she can visualize dark souls and she's bringing them into the house for her husband to kill them, mm. I think made the cops say, like, Let's put you on ice for a second, because then they could do the thing where they detain you before they arrest you. Yeah. So essentially, I imagine they were like, what the fuck are you talking about, lady? She's talking about how they're going to bring a series of uh, revenge against the entire neighborhood. She goes against all the pedophiles that are everywhere. He puts her, they put her in the squad car. They go in, and then the standoff is on, which is one of the worst parts about these sorts of like doomsday scenarios is that Was she unfortunately, shooting at the cops? A, what? Was she shooting at the cops? No, she was already in custody. So the family what, was shooting at the cops. So what? The father and the daughters. What is this woman's crime? Oh, she's just she is just I attached to a, a series a, of homicides. Yeah, yeah. She just is a she's a material witness. I believe the actual. I forget what the actual charges are. Because if yeah, because if they went back to the house and she never shot a gun, but she did lead the cops to. Oh yeah, she the led house. the cops to an ambush. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that that is her crime. She's an accessory to to, to murder. the murder of a police officer. So I think that's that a, she, that's, they, they hate that. They, they're real not into it. They're real not <laughs> into it. Um, you could see how much they're not into it, especially if you go down to Uvalde. Yeah. Um, but these guys, they it is very, uh, it's it's troubling. I think the word 
pedophile gets tossed around really loosely. You know what it's I mean? It's definitely a word that should not be tossed around as loose as it is. It is, and these uh, people are were obviously driven insane with rage, and they got exactly what they wanted. That's the worst part about these like doomsday people is that when the cops show up, they're like, "Yes!" It's like I started doing a research project on sovereign citizens, and you mm -hmm. start to realize, like, you know, in my head, I was always like. At what point did the sovereign citizens, like, has there ever been one that worked? Has there ever been a sovereign citizen movement that actually, like, got you out of a ticket besides just being so annoying that the cops didn't want to deal with you? And then I started realizing, oh, no, it's a feature, not a bug. You're yeah. supposed to get arrested. The sovereign citizen movement is about gumming up the works. It's about being hauled in because that's a badge of honor i think once you say the words i'm a sovereign citizen they know you're not paying your taxes well that's anti-sovereign they don't say sovereign citizen oh what do they say oh no there's stuff like an all national creature of the land yeah it's like you're an all nationals one it's a private citizen mm -hmm. that's a term that they use all the time i'm a private citizen there is a level that i think should exist but you know like there's that one guy in florida i don't know the details but he he like strictly was he had his own water well he solar energy he was completely off the grid that's different and then the government came and found him and told him he's not allowed to do what he does that's the government coming and finding them and that's also florida which is just like texas which is a place that's so free it has every single rule yeah. possible right so that place is that when you when you go, like that's the government looking for that guy i feel bad for that guy yeah. these people go looking for police officers they change their fucking license plate to be these fake license plates they are broadcasting that they are what they are because they've learned from several of their heroes in the media to be out loud about it mm -hmm. because they think that that will like deflect something but they're not all tv personalities so it doesn't really work like that you're just a you are a private citizen yeah you have made yourself a public citizen by getting yourself arrested on body cam and now it's on youtube well, there you go. But that's the that's the type of thing where you're like, but because you know, there's I, I the idea of it's it's just because they never you never see sovereign citizen. You never hear about them unless they're breaking the law. Certainly not. Yeah, because most of the time they are just sitting there. I know that they're just sitting there. I, and mostly, sovereign citizenship seems to really be connected to losing your license for a DUI. Yeah, <laughs> because they're really centered and they on. They just want to keep driving. Yes, they're just okay. They got to for work. Yeah. I do. I understand that thing. They got to drive to in a place like Florida, in a place where you public got, transportation you, sucks. There's no public transportation. You got to drive unless you're in like a very populated area. But otherwise, you're walking miles for the bus. Oh yes, and so that's why they do that. But uh, it's a, it's a weird thing inside of America that is happening. Um, it is weird to be outside of America looking onto America in that way because you're just like uh, we say things here that frighten people. Yeah. I've frightened several people just by my existence alone outside of America. Also, I think going back to the story with um, the daughters and the, the king and all that shit, and they killed the that Sulpicio poor police family. officer. The Sulpicio family. The two daughters, they were not like, they weren't young. They were no. in their 20s. No, they were fully indoctrinated. Yeah, they, they were. were they were probably homeschooled. Obviously, more stuff is going to come out right now. The, there's going to be a big grand jury, so we're going to get all of the stuff. There's, yeah. Right now, she's being held without bail, the mom of the family. So we will find out more because she's a talker, mm -hmm. and so we will. She will definitely tell us all their philosophy. We're going to hear every single thing about it. She's going to be ranting and raving until she goes, because she will probably do some form. They will probably try to get her out for an insanity plea or something like in the, that vein, unless she completely cops to it, which she might. Yeah. She might go completely no contest and just say, yeah, of course we did. That's what we wanted. Man. Oh, it's so awful. Yeah, dude. You, you live in a small town like this. You think, this, you know, as a police officer that you're never going to deal with something crazy like this. I think, unfortunately, that's where the crazy's going. Yeah. You know, I think it's where the crazy is really, really going. I think that's the, In New York, you're just used to it. You know, yeah, every day is like, a fist fight. There's so much going on. New York, in a, in a larger population density, you just have more different types of people rubbing up against each other that's going to cause conflict. There's going to be conflict. Yeah. There's a lot there. You know, there's a massive standard deviation between, like, who's rich, who's poor. It creates a bunch of problems sometimes inside of an inner city. But those are just normal issues like the violence in la and new york is just having that many people yeah. on top of each but other but the per person violence is much bigger in, in smaller towns well it's, uh, in, it's at least in the south it's just gonna be it's just weird the crazy yeah. just trickles down 
in a way. Because again, remember, we're crazy, Eddie. To them, oh. they think we're crazy. Everybody's They're crazy. Saying, if you're so not Pete's, crazy, you're not even worth talking to. Oh yeah, the Sopizio family believes that they are not crazy. Yeah, see, that's the thing. If you believe you're not crazy, you're definitely crazy. Absolutely. No one's correct. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> just know that you're, whatever you say is incorrect to somebody else. But that's just called having a different opinion, and we're all in different reality tunnels. Um, speaking of another different reality tunnel, this is really about, I think this story is about the fact that people don't want to work anymore, and they don't want to work hard. Yeah. So a guy tried to do a baby kill dozer in oh, Columbus, yeah. Ohio. And he was bad at it, all right? Because, yeah, Marvin Heemeyer is a controversial figure. He's our version of a larrikin, right? Mm -hmm. He's mean, bad, shithead. But he worked hard. He put the time in, all right? Spent yeah. a year building that kill dozer. A full he, year, lots of money. Full year. He did it so that he, and he had a plan and a mission, and he went out and he did whatever the hell it was. And did, a lot of it didn't work, which is probably, which kept him as a folk hero. Uh, but this guy did. Who we don't get behind, <laughs> Henry. <laughs> I'm all, I just get the feeling. <laughs> I get the feel. I get the impulse. I'm so happy you never learned how to weld. <laughs> I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I will commission one, though. <laughs> so this was on, um, This I believe this was August 9th. This is a man. Uh, he had a Ford F-150 that, you know, Man, he must have had a tiny penis. He put a big snow plow attachment to the front of it and just started ramming cars mm -hmm. on internet on Interstate 7071 interchange. Um, he then sort of crashed himself on the highway. The police had to come and stop him. There was a bit of a standoff for several hours as he was stuck inside the car. He was throwing wrenches at the cops. One of them hit one in the head. <laughs> but he oh didn't my seriously God. injure him. He had to be hospitalized, but he was fine. Um, and I say the main issue here, and I really think what it was, he had no plan. They finally, he tried to quote unquote unalive himself by jumping off the bridge. They stopped him. They arrested him. And the main issue here, honestly, he was using crack cocaine the entire time. Yeah. And that distracted him. Yeah. You got to have a clear head when you're trying to take over a city. This is just because like, this is what this old bit like these people don't want to work. If he just sat and put the work in, that's what this is about, Eddie. What I think this is a boomer. This is what this is a boomer talking point. I could be completely off base here, but I got a theory of what happened here. Sure. I think towards the end of winter, this man gets the idea how to make some quick, easy money. Snowplow guy he buys a snowplow. Summer comes. Homer just, Simpson style. He's just sitting on this fucking snowplow, losing money. Oh yeah, and he's just like, "What do I do, do with, with this? the snowplow?" Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not snowing. It's the middle of summer. I gotta wait till winter till I can fucking make some money. Yeah, what yeah. if it doesn't snow this year? I'm the snowplow guy. Yeah. If I am not snowplowing, who am I? Yeah. So he tried to use the plow for a different reason. Well, because now he's just like, "Well, that now you're the snow." Yeah, that's what he said to this uh, cop car. Yep. Yeah, he, he did a bunch of, but you know, but again, you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. He didn't make it happen. It's just, you're not going to, oh, yes, this is sort of a, for a form of national news, but that's as far as you're going to go, buddy. I'm not even going to say your name. I don't think it's that important. No. But it did try. And it's, you got to be careful. All right. You got to get put some pizzazz in. Think about what you want. What do you want the big picture to say? <laughs> That's my big thing. What do you want your What do you want your legacy to be? Yeah, no, he's not gonna. This guy's not even gonna be able to drive again, much less get another snowplow. No, no, but it's gonna also, lead to him becoming. Also, the looks like it still could be used, so maybe, hopefully, they resell it or at least give it to the police. I mean, just for the sake of just bragging rights as a snowplow guy, being like, "This is the snowplow that stopped the police," would yeah. be kind of huge, mm -hmm. you know. But he he wasn't prepared. Got to get in there. Bigger plan, better plan. Wear a costume. Yes. Think about your legacy. And this last story I think we can get into. This, this is a really weird. The only reason why, as I want clarification, and I'm hoping our listeners can give it to us, there was a woman that was found dead in the baggage conveyor belt at O'Hare Airport over the weekend. And they said there was video of this, 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 this little older lady going into a restricted area, just breaking through a restricted area at 2.30 in the morning at the airport. She shouldn't have been able to get in there. The doors were locked. There was said. just nobody there. There was nobody. Yeah. yeah. And then she was found, they said, caught up in the gumming works of the conveyor belt system for the luggage. They always tell you not to sit on them. It's not. It's extremely dangerous. But then they labeled it a suicide, which I think is 
a crazy way to kill yourself. I just, I, I wonder how they know that because yes, obviously she, she did it on purpose. She did it on, she did it on purpose. Yeah, and she Do you think jumped so? into it. She she purposefully opened up a door to a back area, found the thing, and jumped into it, which is like the most double dare way of unaliving yourself I've ever heard. I didn't watch the video. Did she jump? Did she fall into it? Maybe she passed out. I have in no a very idea. inconvenient spot. Well, it doesn't sound like. Sounds like whatever it was, it was like planned. Crazy. They said it was planned. And they said it was like cheap because that's what the cops are saying. But side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. I'd love to get an update on this. Yeah. And find out whether or not. Like, how do you figure that out? Shit. If it's not obvious, how do you figure it out? I mean, if there's no note. Right? If there's no note, how do you say she, maybe they just don't want to like deal with it. Well, but I feel like just accident. Accidents Makes happen, but an accident someone can get on oh, no, I bet you that. Yeah. I bet you that's. I bet you that it's that fucking simple. That if it's a fucking accident, then that means it's on O'Hare, and if it's a suicide, it's on her. Yeah. Wow. And if they don't know the difference, well, well no, I mean, we a, don't know what her emotional state was. I don't. We think don't know it, anything about her really. Th maybe that's what it is. Maybe more stuff will come out and find out whether or not she was upset in the airport. She could have been visibly upset in the airport. I she mean, who isn't visibly upset at the airport, especially if you're stuck there at two thirty in the fucking morning? Oh yes, it's horrible in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, I start opening doors. I don't give a shit. See what happens. I wouldn't. I wouldn't though. No, no, you shouldn't. But you no. get you get the rage. But only if you go insane. But the thing is, that's why you really just got to. That's why the key is to sort of you're put so, yourself in a Henry, place. Henry, full disclosure. Henry's so angry at the airport. I hate the airport. You I like it is like it obviously like calms me how angry you are. Like cuz I know I, <laughs> I hate the airport. I hate traveling. It I love is, to travel. Is. I love capital T, the concept of traveling. I love new places, yeah. new people, but new like, food. But like in the airport, you're irrational. I'm a monster. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but like once we get out of it or like I'm what? nice to the staff, but that one guy was fucking crawling up my ass. Oh, yeah, no, you're nice to the staff. No, no, but you're like I watching your blood boil and your skin change colors. It's cuz it's the arbitrary rules yeah. is that every no, airport, arbitrary rules. every ru airport has a different set of rules of, especially here you of also what can refuse to take the weed pills like i do yeah i know they it really just, help me stay calm yeah i just got god I, I do it bare bone because it's like i just keep getting stripped of my stuff yeah every airport i'm losing so another piece no one of ever stuff. checks my bags and every single time henry gets stopped and like was because i have all the recording equipment in yeah, my yeah, bag yeah, yeah. and it was like and i'm and it's all like tetris light put together and the last time they pulled it all out and i'm like i'm a traveling comedian and fucking like this is just a it's a podcast rig it's a it's the biggest growing industry all show business you've never seen this shit before you've never seen a fucking microphone before they love that when you're like when they start harassing you and you're like, I'm a traveling comedian. Yeah. Do you think that makes them want to not hassle you more? I know, like, God. <laughs> there should be. I've been saying this. We I'm an a, entertainer. We need a white flag. Yeah, yeah. We need a white flag that, that keeps you separate from these things. It's a microphone. I'm not asking for anything special. <laughs> you're right? It's not like I'm asking for a special. I'm not trying to cut the line. All yeah. right? I let the pregnants go. You should put it in your check luggage so you don't have to deal with it, though. But I don't want them to get hurt. I don't want to get broken. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because it gets slammed around. Yeah, the wires just look like bomb wires. I know! And that's the problem. But they're microphone wires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do, they are round, they're, uh, you know, wound up right correctly, and they always undo it, and it's very upsetting. It's extremely angry. But yeah. yes, I am trying to calm down, because I love people. Mm -hmm. I love the people. Hate the position, not the person. I think that we gotta get you some sleepy time tea in the morning before we travel tomorrow or the day after. Mm, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. I'm gonna talk about the 22 hour trip we're gonna have, but it's gonna be good. Yes. It's gonna be good. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's time for some listener emails. I love this one. Okay. A few weeks back, my coworkers and I were stationed out in Zortman, Montana for a job. Zortman is a town with a population of roughly 19 people. That's a, that's, is that a town? It's 19? a gathering. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a pecker of pedophiles. I've definitely had larger parties in my apartment. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it is located at the base of the Little Rocky Mountains. One night, we were all hanging out at the town saloon restaurant, and we were approached by a local. He introduced himself as the chef of the restaurant and sat down to join us. The conversation started out pretty normal, but took a turn for the weird once we told him that we work out in the woods. He got very serious 
all of a sudden, and he told us that we absolutely had to be very careful out in these woods. I mean, that's good advice. Oh, yeah. We figured he meant because of bears, steep terrain, but we were very wrong. He then stated that these woods are home to a population of Sasquatches and that every Zortman local has had some kind of Bigfoot encounter in their lives. Entertained by this notion and curious to hear more, we asked him about his encounter, which was probably a mistake. Here's his encounter story. He was hiking through the woods in a very remote area by himself when he suddenly had been struck on the head and knocked unconscious by something. When he came to, he was laying on the floor of a cave with the female Bigfoot standing over him. She made him drink the, what he described as a moss-like soup that made him instantly hard as a rock. She then proceeded to have her way with him for hours. He claimed that he did not like it and was extremely scared at first, but then started to really enjoy it and dubbed it the best sex of his life. To this day, he says he leaves candy bars and weed out in the woods for the Sasquatches <laughs> to stay on their good side and probably he hopes of another encounter with the hair he's in dress. Well, doesn't he know where the cave is? <laughs> no, How he said he, he was get... knocked out. But, but you have to leave at some point. He's in a daze. <laughs> he's in a daze. Even if you're knocked out, unless the Bigfoot like yes. picked you up and put you back on your patio. I don't know. Other locals in this bar join in to tell us their Sasquatch encounters, non-sexual ones, and even some encounters with the little people, which after hearing more about them, I think they were referring to some variation of the Hildefolk or Hildenfolk. All in all, Zortman is a wild little place with some colorful characters. And it's safe to say we were extra careful in the woods and did not have any encounters with horny Sasquatches. <laughs> I feel like you could have just came across a and came across a good old fashioned mountain lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the Zortman prom right there. It's a, it's a Zortman prom. <laughs> All right, now here's this. Here we go. Hold on. You can't just go past. I'm like trying to digest that mentally. You can't just zoom past that. That I man mean. is because he's not here. <laughs> if I could talk to that man, we could dig in. I don't know what that man is thinking. Or who you, whoever you are, tell us like the name of the of the restaurant. I want to call. I got to talk to this guy. I want to know because like, know. this story really is too important. Well, because. I've read a lot I of I can't a, tell if it was if it was a uh, ape ray or consensual sex. I think that he says it he, for ha. Uh, it started bad but went good. He I don't know but And now he's a fan. He oh, he, he needs it. Now he's in love. Now, I feel like I he could have been was, flirting with you guys. Or you know what it is? This lady Bigfoot was cheating on her Bigfoot husband. Didn't want him to know. And now, yeah, he, she would have you back yeah. or have her, the chef back. But it's a shame. But it, yeah, it's yeah. shameful. Exactly. If she found out, it'd be like the, the guy with the crocodile. Found out. It's like the guy who won the crocodiles who had the dog sex room. Yes. It's that story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But for Bigfoot. But for Bigfoot, yeah. But if the male Bigfoot ever found out about what the chef did to his wife... I he's mean, she cooked him. for him. She's going to rip his dick off. That guy's going to, that Bigfoot's going to fucking kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To he's going to be careful who you're telling the story to. Yeah, absolutely. Because now you're going to get these jealous ass Bigfoot. You want to make a Bigfoot jealous? That's I wouldn't. scary to me. Also strange, the idea of, it's almost like, it's a reverse cook. Yeah, because he's also a chef who was cooked for. It's definitely a dream. It's definitely a, a, like a weird dream. He probably ate too much weird fucking Montana mushrooms. Something. Well, hey, I say God bless him. Oh, certainly. And I hope he's still out there getting his dick sucked in the forest. But please, tell us the name of the restaurant so we can call. I can have Man, Kelly call. What do you... I mean, like, all right, so Bigfoot vagina, Bigfoot... Have it like a Bigfoot blowjob. Horrifying. But probably okay because they're um, on the... Are they... Yeah, they're, they're herbivores. Big teeth. But they're, big teeth. But their teeth, they're big, the teeth I are guess big, but they're not dick. like fangs. Apes do have, they do oral sex. Bears suck dick. I've heard that. Yeah, we do. I won't but test I think, it. I think bears suck their own dicks, though. Side stories. There's LPOTL at gmail.com. <laughs> you can find out that for certain. We have a lot of bear experts. Um, you know what? I'm going to save this other letter. Yeah. I'll save it for tomorrow. We're going to be recording again this week. Yeah, and we're recording where this comes from, correct? Yes. So that yes. makes a lot of sense. All right, my sweet fuckers. 
um, live every day knowing that the best pussy of your life might be in the woods. You might yeah. have to be unconscious for it, but then once it's riding you, you can laugh yeah. knowing that, man, oh, man, no one's going to believe this story except for my dick. Yeah. Right? And you're going to fall in love with that lady Sasquatch because she doesn't have, she's got, she isn't afraid of commitment because she's out in the woods and she's committed to staying hot, hidden all these years. She's going to make a nice wife. That's right. Get if they a, believe in organized love. Get a door for that cave. Also, September 13th, we're going to be investigating the O'Hare uh, luggage oh, uh, yeah. oh, problem. Oh, very over. much so. We're coming to the Park West, September 13th. Side stories. Come and see us Great. live the day before the last podcast on the left show. Um, the last podcast on the left show on the 14th of September is sold out. Yes. So come and see our me and Henry do our side story show, which is completely different than we're, the last podcast. We're just making shit up. This yeah. is gonna be great. We're gonna have a prepared bit. We'll stuff. have prepared. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be. It's gonna loose. be a completely different show. So if you're worried if you, you're gonna come, if it's the same show, it's completely different. So if you want to see both, please come see both. Uh, we'd love to hang out with you guys. And then I believe we got honestly, we're basically sold out in Adelaide. Brisbane sold out. Adelaide and. Per, per basically sold out, but please, we got a, little, a couple of tickets left. Come and check us out. We've been these shows have been fucking great, and the VIP meet and greets have been and, awesome. And uh, Q and As have been incredible. We really Everyone's, just. Uh, no offense to America, best questions we've gotten, I yeah. think, have been out here. And it's really been really like, fun discussions. And like you know, we also remember we hang out. If you're in the VIP, a lot of times we hang out, we sign, ping, we say hi, we take pictures and stuff because, especially because uh, we don't know when we're going to be back. It's going to be sooner than the last time. Yes. That's for fucking certain. Um, but hail sweet Satan. And thank you, Australia. Hail Lady Bigfoot and her dick sucking abilities. Hey. You know, there's a, there's a man Bigfoot out there that's the luckiest dude in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> Except he's being cheated on. Yeah, no, that's the thing. He's being cheated on. Hey, but I guess sometimes you got to share. Is there monogamy in the Bigfoot world? Side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. <laughs> Not according to some of the literature I've seen. 